All right, so this is a follow-up story I wanted to share. I believe I reported on this on a previous show regarding the postal services, not just in my neighborhood, but all over the city of Chicago. However, I am going to point out the post offices near me, um, Northtown Station, and now Edgebrook, Lincolnwood, of which I'm going to start this story by sharing this video from, I believe it's WGN News. So let me start the video, and then I'll get into what I'm updating. You might want to avoid. And WGN's Megan Dwyer joins us live from Lincolnwood with that story. Megan? Ray and Micah, we are live tonight outside the Lincolnwood Post Office Annex uh, near Arthur and Lincoln. And it is this post uh, office box here that people, this mailbox that people say don't trust. They are sending holiday cards here and some checks. They're getting their mail stolen. And sometimes they're getting their bank accounts wiped out. And it's, it's this mailbox. They sent their son, a graduate student at Georgetown, a $10,000 check to help with tuition. Even if I would have sent him, we would have sent him a $100 check, somebody cha changes the amounts anyway. It never made it to D.C. He said, you got the check, right? Because he knew that it had been cashed. And he said, no, I didn't get it. And that's when we looked and saw that the payee was changed to a person that we didn't know, and the, uh, someone's address was on there, a Southside Chicago address. The Lincolnwood Police Department says there have now been 37 stolen checks from this post office this year at 3500 North Lincoln, the majority reported in just the last month. Now, okay, this video, this video was from the end of 2021. This is not the first time checks have been stolen from that mailbox nor reported on. There was another news report that shared checks were being stolen from this mailbox in 2020, this whole previous year. You're going to oh, tell what? me, you're going to oh, tell me in a year's time, this fucking post office where you see the door there, the entry is like right in front of that mailbox. Lincolnwood police, the postal inspectors can't put a fucking security camera up there on that door. To see who's been going into that mailbox for a year? Of course not, because it's an inside job. There are people in the post. So if this has gone on for over a year now, and the reason I'm bringing up this article, Ed, I mistakenly didn't, until I like researched this post office, I put two checks in the mail at that mailbox uh, in May. Okay? And they didn't get to their destination. One of the checks was a net 30 check to one of my manufacturers. They didn't get there. And I'm, and I'm thinking... Two, one check I can understand not getting to its destination, too. And I went online to look at the Edgebrook Lincolnwood station and found this story. Further research it to find out that checks had been stolen from this mailbox a year prior. Now, I wrote my representative, Jan Schakowsky, and I wrote the postmaster here in Chicago. And it's not the first time I've written them. First time for this station. I've written them before about Northtown Station, which is my postal uh, station, Frequently misreporting delivery tracking to meet their metrics, saying that they've delivered stuff that they don't deliver, and then it comes by two or three days later when it's supposed to be priority mail. I know these are little things, guys, but when you've got an entire postal system misreporting the delivery tracking of mail, not paying any attention to who's going into this mailbox at Edgebrook Lincolnwood Station, stealing checks that they then falsify to rip people off when it's clearly... An, it's so easy to put a security camera there. When I wrote Jan Schakowsky here in Chicago about this particular, I'm like, why is it? I just discovered that this has been going on for a year. Had I known, I wouldn't have put my checks in that mailbox. But Jan Schakowsky wrote me back. Thank you for taking the time to get in touch and share your views with us, my views. Because I wrote, uh, I dropped two stamp check billments into the mailbox at Edgebrook Lincolnwood post office didn't get to where they were supposed to go. This has been a problem for over years when I was bringing her attention. So thank you for taking the time to get in touch and share your views with me. Your email did not appear to have a mailing address attached and your email address did not match to an existing constituent record. Please oh, respond to this message with your mailing address due to the large volume of email my office receives. I will only be able to respond to residents of Illinois' 9th Congressional District. I wrote her back. I shared my other emails are this email my Gmail address, here is my address, and I have corresponded with your representative, Leslie Combs, 
about these ongoing problems at the Postal Station in West Rogers Park in the past, and now you can add questions about why Edgebrook Lincolnwood hasn't solved its stolen check problem for two years. Didn't get a response from, from Representative Schakowsky. And then I got an email today, since I resent this, I, I wrote her back. So it appears postal customers aren't supposed to expect more from USPS services. When we don't get responses to ongoing USPS problems, we are vigilant about reporting in the same postal stations for the past three years as highlighted below. What's being done about the inept management at Northtown Station? What's being done to prevent more checks from being stolen from the mailbox at Edgebrook Lincolnwood? Has anyone had the brains to put a security camera on it to figure out who keeps stealing mail with checks from that box? And I further said, you know what? I'm a media pundit on YouTube. I'm happy to talk about the negligence and lack of response USPS fixing things on my next live stream, which is now. Now, I got a response from Eddie Morgan, who's the new postal inspector in Chicago. He used to be in Kansas City. So the response I got from him today, hello, I'm out of the office and will not have phone or email access. Please contact the Kansas City Postmaster at 816-374-9144 for Kansas City Postal Issues. They haven't even given him a Chicago Postal Service email address. Now that he's serving as the postmaster of the city of Chicago. Let me continue with this, this video. I made a report to the Lincolnwood Police. They said there's been other cases. I had to call the U.S. Postal Service. Good luck. Spent hours at the bank. Police say the general mail isn't being taken, just checks. And they are working with the U.S. Postal Inspector to figure out who's doing it. I'm sure it was an employee. <laughs> Police say whoever it is changes the name on the check and then fraudulently cashes it in a different jurisdiction. I just wouldn't trust, I wouldn't trust the mail service at all right now. Shapiro, a former prosecutor turned defense attorney, says she appreciates that investigations take time, but she wants to warn people not to mail checks at all, and not just from the Lincolnwood Post Office, but from anywhere. I mean, they should be 100% accountable. I mean, it's getting, it's getting bad when you can't even mail a check. So this whole thing happened back on November 22nd. That's when they mailed the check. It got cashed uh, the very next day on the 23rd, and they are still waiting here almost a month later to get their $10,000 back. Uh, police tell me the first thing you need to do if you are... The police are useless because checks have been stolen since this box for over a year. Now we're into the second. We're now in 2022. So, yes, I am going to subclip this particular segment put it on YouTube, send it to Representative Schakowsky, send it to the postmaster here in Chicago, see if I can send it to the, I don't know that uh, the Postal Service Federal is going to pay any attention to this, but our postal system is broken down. I used to always be supportive of the postal system, the union workers in the postal system, because I believe in unions and I believe in the postal system. I ship everything now from my business guys, UPS. And anytime I order anything from anybody online, I beg them to use UPS because USPS cannot be trusted anymore. You've got, who's the guy that uh, Trump put in charge? Tom, uh, what's his name? Tom DeJoy, who's completely been stripping down the Postal Service to try to privatize it for his cronies from the uh, private uh, private delivery businesses that he he's associates with. Uh, it's just, it's... I guess what bugs me the most about this and why I wanted to update it was that I'm not the only person who probably contacts my representative. I'm not the only person who sends emails to the postmaster. You can go to Yelp to look at the pages and pages of negative reviews regarding the inept management at Northtown Station. Not only inside their lobby, but as far as their deliver misreporting deliveries to make it look like they've delivered stuff that they then sit on for days. I, there, there are weeks we don't get mail delivered here in my building for a week, and yeah, this um, is the brush okay. off you get. Yeah, Jerry, it's uh, it's Louis DeJoy. Uh, he was Joy, appointed. He was appointed in May of 2020, but uh, this is and yes, he's been a nightmare for the United States Postal Service, and the dude should be in prison uh, for some of the stuff that he's done to uh, to hamper and slowly uh, uh, dismantle the U.S. Postal Service. But people need to be aware that he didn't start this. 
This has been an ongoing process for decades from both sides of the aisle who have been slowly trying to dismantle the United States Postal Service so they can privatize mail delivery. They've and they they are doing it because it, like you like Jerry said, he's using you you UPS now. He doesn't trust the post office. That that in 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 its essence, in my mind, it's treason. It's tragic. It's tragic that we the can't. U.S. I Postal mean, Service was reliable. established. Yep. To I yeah, mean, sorry. it's supposed to exist uh, and not be corrupted by uh, jerk weasels, as I put it. Um, you should not have to be. Uh, worrying about whether your check that you send somebody is going to get stolen out of a mailbox, washed, and cashed by somebody else. Yeah, that's not how it should be. I want to share something. Constitutional conservative shares in the chat. It's yet another example of a failed government-run and operated service department. Yeah, it is. Go to UPS or FedEx and trust a private sector service. Well, you know, constitutional conservative who I've had these discussions with in the past, I've had to, but let's keep in mind it's because of the same postmaster that Trump assigned, period. And let me tell you something else about this, Louis DeJoy. Um, the Postal Service was given a mandate to, re re to establish an electric-powered fleet. Do you follow this, Ed? You might know where I'm going with this. Uh, last year, they were tasked with finding a company that was going to provide them with electric vehicles going forward to make the postal service greener and, and, and the vehicles to last longer. There was a company called Workhorse that was at the forefront of electric delivery vehicles as well as electric postal delivery vehicles. They supply vehicles for UPS, electric vehicles. Everybody assumed Workhorse was going to get this contract because they met all of the requirements. It was a big growth stock. It was a big startup stock a lot of people believed in because Workhorse had what it took to meet all of the specifics of Biden's mandates regarding electric vehicles. So lo and behold, when the postal contract was announced, it was to a defense contractor in Wisconsin that doesn't manufacture electric vehicles. Most of their fleet is, is combustion vehicles that can be retooled into electric vehicles that will spend more money and take longer. And oh, lo and behold, the day before that contract the U.S. Postal Service finally announced was given out, somebody invested a lot of stock in that Wisconsin company and made out like a fucking bandit when DeJoy decided to go against the mandate that was put forth by Biden's administration as far as going greener and giving that contract to a manufacturer that could supply more electric vehicles and grow the fleet to be longer lasting. That constitutional conservative is the corruption of the postmaster that was assigned by Trump. So while I agree with Mr. Constitutional Conservative about the fact it's a failed government run and operated service department, never forget it was under the corrupt leadership of Louis DeJoy, who was appointed by Donald Trump. Yeah, it's uh, very often you, you will get criticism uh, from, from conservatives and people who want quote unquote small government who, who and often it's politicians who want, quote unquote, small government who say, oh, well, government doesn't work. And then they get elected and prove it because they don't want it to work. So they do everything possible to not help it to work. So if you if you get people into office who don't care about making government work for you or anyone, then then that's that's what you're getting in return. That's why it's a problem. The problem isn't that it's funded by government. The problem is that it's being hampered by people who get into government so that they can sabotage it. Gene speaks to your point absolutely, Ed. You're right, and Gene is right. The guy in charge, DeJoy, wants to destroy the Federal Postal Service. They can make money if they destroy it. Corporate fuckers, absolutely. This right. type of job can be a more profitable business than a regular job. Now, JR, yes, we do. We have a postal uh, inspector general and inspection service that should investigate 
Now, I'm not sure if you're talking about uh, the insider information that went out uh, before the postal contract was announced with the electric vehicle company regarding the electric vehicle company or the initial story about the post, the, the uh, mailbox that's getting robbed all the time for over a year with the check washing. But yeah, on both points, why aren't they? I don't know. Go figure. Or, or, are, or if they are, why haven't they caught them yet? Yeah. Because, I mean, they had information that somebody cashed that check. They could have tracked down that person who cast a check and, and, and worked their way back to find out where that check came from and who, you know, uh, so that they could find out who was raiding those mailboxes. And yeah, it's probably, it sounds like it would be an inside job, Jerry. Like you well, said. JR uh, uh, clarifies yeah, postal OIG investigates postal workers and inspectors. Okay, so for over almost coming up on almost two years now, that particular mailbox reported on the story still has checks stolen from it. It's been reported to the postal investigators and inspectors, and checks are still being stolen. I sent uh, an update to the representative Schakowsky. Couldn't be the first one, right? Uh, the postmaster here and the postmaster preceding him. It's not a new story. So why aren't they investigating? Don't know. Yes. Yeah. Biden does have the same postmaster in place because, unfortunately, Biden can't change the postal, the postmaster, constitutional conservative. There's a board of governors at the Postal Service. Now, Biden could switch out that board. I don't know why he hasn't, since um, ultimately he, they're the ones responsible for replacing the postal inspector. I'll give I you believe, that. Yeah, I believe, Jerry, he did recently just appoint like two or three uh, people to that board. So they, can, they actually have... A majority where they could vote DeJoy out, but something tells me there's probably more corruption in that board than, yeah. than anyone cares to uh, go into. And as we know, Melty Joe will say he wants to do something, but then will he? We don't know. He says a lot of things. Yeah. Joe won't do shit. Now, Kathy Powers shares, can we send a prank check? You know, Kathy, I was wondering, given the fact that they haven't put any kind of security cam out there to find out who's breaking into that post box, that mailbox at Edge, uh, Edgebrook Lincolnwood, what if I went over there and decided to take a hammer to that mailbox? I wonder if I'd get I bet you I'd get caught. I bet you that they are watching that mailbox, and if I decided I wanted to vandalize that mailbox, I bet I'd get caught. I just don't want to take the risk of like going to jail to prove, wait, you've got cameras out to catch me vandalizing the mailbox, but you haven't had cameras out for the past two years to figure out who's pilfering the box, stealing and washing checks. Oh, or, uh, or Jerry, you know, you, you ever seen those videos where the guy uh, like leaves, get leaves packages out on his doorstep and stuff so that people steal yeah. them and they got little booby traps and confetti and all kinds of cameras and stuff in them. Yeah. It'd be cool to do something like that. It would. How about this? Put a firecracker in the box. No, no, no. That would be destruction of property. We don't want to do that. Could, something like, you know, uh, put something like on the check that actually like, like some kind of disappearing, reappearing ink or something that when anybody who touches that thing, like they got like purpled stuff all over their hands or something, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 that they use for bank robbers. So constitutional conservative, USPS has sucked way before Trump, Mr. Vassilato stock. Something tells me constitutional conservative is a big Trump supporter. You stupid, ignorant, son of a bitch, dumb bastard. Jesus Christ, I met some dumb bastards in my time, but you outdo them all. Get over there. Yeah, but he's not entirely wrong. I mean, that's what I've been saying is that for decades, and you know this constitutional conservative. It's gotten you know worse. It's gotten it's been, worse. It's, yeah, it's got it's it's. I re, I re, I don't recall this many problems with the postal service though, Ed. Right no. in our faces. Where you go to the Northtown Station branch, and so here's my experience from the Northtown Station branch. I will routinely buy my postage at home, label my packages. I would take it to the post office, and I'd put it. At, bring it to the counter, say, can you scan it, give me a receipt? The clerk at the counter would not give me a receipt because, because of COVID. I'm like, but you're, but you're selling postage to people coming up to the counter and giving them receipts and actually handling their packages that they bring from home. Why aren't you like willing to scan it and give me a receipt? You, I'll tell you why, 
because they would tell me to go put my, my package on the counter over there where all the packages would pile up. They wouldn't scan those packages the day that you leave the package on the counter. They get to those packages when they wanted to get to them. That's why they don't want to give you a receipt so they can control the metrics inside because they couldn't keep up with the workload. That's what it was all about. And I complained to Schakowsky about that. And I complained to the postmaster about that. There was no, COVID was no reason not to give people who had pre-labeled packages a receipt at the counter. Yeah. But they would allow it to happen. Even when you complain and you contact the manager at the station and she would give you the same bullshit excuse. That's inept management on the local level that they continue to allow. That's not the only thing. Go to Yelp, look at the complaints at your postal service. When you see that many complaints and the postmaster in Chicago knows that there are these problems at these different branches and they don't either get rid of the manager or get that manager into line to make business easier for the customers who they're supposed to serve, you realize it's a corrupt system and they just don't give a shit. Hey, buddy. Yeah. And the doing. sad fact is, like, I, again, this could be stopped, but there's no one who wants to take the initiative to really call out the fact that people are losing money. And I have to wonder how many of those people at the post office have partook in to this illegal activity. I'm going to tell you, Kit, what this cost. Those two checks that I mailed, it cost me $70. And I'll tell you why. Because I had to stop payment on both checks. If they end, I, I didn't expect them to get to where they were supposed to go. But they were mailed in May, didn't get to where they were going to go by June. One was a net 30. I had to overnight a check to my manufacturer, which costed me $30. Then I had to spend another. I think it was $30 in stop payment fees on the two checks that never got anywhere. Because what if those checks got to my vendors and they didn't remember, oh, he already paid this and put those checks through again, causing an overdraft. So this bullshit on two checks that were either stolen, and I, they had to be stolen because it's like there were checks in there. How do two checks not get to where they're supposed to go? Two payment checks. That's why. That's what led me on this whole rabbit hole of like figuring out what's going on over so, yeah, it, it costed me money. And I told that to Shikowsky. I'm like, this cost $60 or $70 to, to stop payment on the checks and have to overnight a new check to one of my vendors that needed that needed to be net 30 to keep me, you know, current and, and in good shape. Crickets from the postmaster, from Shikowsky, from everybody. So, yeah, it costs people money. Far less than the woman in this report who sent the check to her, her child in college. But still, nobody should have to go through this bullshit. Agreed. All right. So yeah. last story of the night. I'm and, sorry. Go ahead. And just and just the last thing is is just it. Um, sorry. Um, the post office used to be super reliable, but like I said, it had been over the decades been systematically been hampered, and uh, they are try they were trying to give it problems like uh, that 75 year pre funding for retirement. Uh, uh, account uh, uh, pensions and stuff like that, and then, then the joy got in there. And since everybody was on lockdown and paying attention, and everybody's dealing with having to to do things through the post office, we definitely noticed things like dismantling of sorting machines. Yeah, and uh, and and of course, uh, and obviously, especially during uh, the election season, yeah. is when that's why that's why Trump staffing shortages and yeah. yeah, yeah, around the election, that's what DeJoy was put in to make sure to interfere with, which is kind of funny in the because when you had Trump telling everybody don't vote by mail, and, and they didn't, and DeJoy was basically usurping the the vote by mail thing. That's probably why Trump lost votes in the end because so many more older people and seniors that were used to mailing in their balance that would, you know, unfortunately vote blue no matter who, sent their balance in for, for Biden. Yeah, and uh, and normally uh, in, a, in a sane world where you could trust the post office, you would consider that a normal chain of custody. Uh, and then it wouldn't be broken by sending it through the U.S. mail. But of course now that we have situations like uh, like someone going and opening up a post office box and washing checks and cashing them out and doing whatever they want with your mail, then yeah, that I mean I, that can definitely create some question marks in chain of custody, which sucks because vote by mail uh, should be a reliable way to vote. 
my last uh, thoughts on the appointment of Louis DeJoy to be the postmaster by Trump. He said, right. job, sir." 